has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who we believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know you shall be remembered for favor i say you shall be remembered to be favor him let's thank him because he's a good God. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory. We magnify you for who you are. We thank you for your mercies, goodness, and kindness in our lives. What shall we render unto you? But to glorify you. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take this song. Channel of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father. No boundaries, no limit. No boundaries, no limit. Open up. Let it call on to thee. Channel of my spirit. We are praying that God will open up to us this morning to receive from Him. We are praying to God already. I am with our Father. Open up. No boundaries, no limits. No boundaries, no limits. Open up. For the last time, channel, channel of my spirit, channel of my spirit, open up, open up, open up, I am with the Father, open up, no boundaries, no boundaries, no limit. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for another time you have brought us to your presence to be blessed of you. We ask that our hearts and mind, our spirit be opened up to receive from you what you have for us this day in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that we will hear you in a audible voice. And we shall not only hear, we shall be here, doers of those words in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit that buys and sells distraction that hinder your work for permitted us, we decree they will not prosper in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take charge this morning and let the name of the Father be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You may please be seated. Can we clap and jam our hands together for the Lord? Are we clapping for the Lord or clapping for a human being? Amen. I want to appreciate our daddy and mommy in the Lord for this privilege to share the word with this God's people again this morning. And I pray the Lord will bless us together in the mighty name of Jesus. This month is encountering the resurrected Christ. Uh, we are in our year of divine multiplications. 
you are in our year of the man pontifications. I want us to open to John 20 from verse 1. That's our scripture. John 20 from verse 1. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Madeline early, while it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and said the son have been taken away from the sepulchre. Can I have in the New King James Version? New King James Version. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and they were going to the tomb. Verse 4. So they both ran together. And the other disciple had ran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooped down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Let's continue. To verse, we are going to verse 18, please. And some Peter came in, in and some Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen cloths but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And now when she has said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposed him to be the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to mean teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magali came and told the disciples, that she has seen the Lord and that he has spoken these things to her. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Before I go into what the Lord has for us this morning, I want us to listen to a music. Uh, if that's the only thing we can remember, just look at the lyrics of those words, then I will give a short message and we are done. Media, please. Media, we are waiting for you. Behind this curtain there is a heart that's certain it's been taken in. It's starting to fall apart. And I feel like such an easy target. Dodging bullets, I'm exhausted. How can any moment be this hard?
Thank you, media. Praise the Lord. That song says, I don't want to hold. That, that song says, I don't want to hold anything back from Jesus. Where we read is a classic example, Mary ensuring that nothing stood between her and Jesus. And the title of this sermon this morning is, Whom Are You Seeking? Whom are you seeking? Whom are you seeking? The first question the angel asked Mary when she was weeping is, Where are you weeping? Why are you weeping? Why are you crying? Then Jesus went further and asked her when he thought Jesus was the guy and said, Why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Because for every cry, there is something you are seeking. And my question to you this morning is, and to myself is, what am I seeking? Whom am I seeking? Whom are you seeking? God has placed in every man a desire to seek something. There is a vacuum that God has placed in man. There is always this heart to seek. There is always this heart to look for something. To search for something. To pursue something. Is God has created in us. Unfortunately, after the fall of Adam, the default of man is to seek self, is to seek pleasure, is to seek gratification, is to seek recognition. Everything that came by the fall of Adam, the default is negative for man. Even when a new man is regenerated, when you get born again, it does not become automatic that you begin to seek God. That default is still there. It takes conscious effort. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit. It takes constant practice for you to begin to seek God and the things of God. So the question we are asking ourselves this morning, whom are you seeking? Jesus was the originator of that question. He asked Mary, who am you seeking? Whom are you seeking? Who is the person you are using your energy to seek? What is causing you to cry? We are already in the fourth month of the year. And I know that in our place of prayer, we are crying to God. We are crying and weeping. Some in their closet. But the question is, what are you weeping for? What is the source of your cry? Is it for the self-seeking things? Is it for to get yourself pleasure? Is it to approve yourself? Is it to prove yourself what is what you are seeking for? And to seek... Or seeking means to go in search, to look for, to pursue. Can you please ask your neighbor, whom are you seeking? Ask again that question. Whom are you seeking? Whom are you seeking? There's no one, either you are aware of it or, or, or not, you are seeking something. You can say, I'm not seeking anything. I'm just by myself. That may not be correct. That I'm by myself, I'm just on my own. No, there's something inwardly, internally, that we are seeking. Now, what the Bible says, He said, The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You need to pause and ask yourself, Whom am I seeking? What is the cause of my pursuit? What is the energy I do day and night and labor? What, was, what is it for? It has been said by my Mudog that the proof of desire is pursuit. The proof of desire is pursuit. When you pursue something, you desire that thing. When you choose your energy for it, you desire it. So this morning, we are just going to look very briefly at this topic. Whom are you seeking? The first theory we are, look, we are going to look at is whom was Mary seeking? Whom was Mary seeking? And what can we learn from her? Mary Madeline is the center point of the passage, John 20. Whom was Mary seeking? And what can we learn from her? And the second part of this message is, how do we seek the resurrected Christ? How do we seek 
the resurrected Christ. How do we seek the resurrected Christ? I pray the Lord will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. My first question to us is that who is this Mary? Who was this Mary? Madeline. Can we go to the book of Luke chapter 8? I want to read from verse 1 to 3. Who is this Mary we are talking about? This false woman that saw Jesus. Who is she? Who is she? Luke chapter 8, media. From verse 1 to 3. Now he came to pass afterward that he was talking about Jesus. He went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad findings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, many called Magdalene, out of whom come seven demons. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. This Mary Magdalene was among the people who were providing substance for Jesus. They must have been entrepreneurs, if I'm using my sense to think about it. And they were providing for Jesus, they were meeting his needs. So she was somebody who had seven demons that came out of her. She became a disciple of Jesus and they were providing for, for him from their substance. And the first thing I want to see in the life of this Mary that you and I want to need to emulate is that she was passionate about the work of the master. She was passionate about the work of the master. Bible says, very early, the first day of the week, while it was yet dark, while it was still dangerous, she took off to go to the tomb. And I wonder within myself, how could she roll the stone away? What was in her mind when she was going there? She was moved with passion. This was a master who had died. It was believed he could not do anything for them again. But the love for the master, the passion she had, she was going to anoint his body. She was passionate. The Bible said when she saw that the tomb has been opened, she ran back. She ran back. She did not walk leisurely. She was passionate about this master. And the question I want to ask yourself and myself is, how passionate are we about the master? Now that we even know that he has resurrected, what is our passion in whom we are seeking? The Bible says in 1 Psalm 21 verse 8, it says the king's business requires haste. The king's business requires haste. More so, we are in the last days. The signs of the last days are with us. How should we be passionate about the things of God, about the work of God? She was a very passionate woman. And I pray that that passion that she has, we shall emulate it in the mighty name of Jesus. The second thing I saw in her life, very quickly, she risked her life for the master's sake. She risked her life for the master's sake. The Bible recorded that while it was still dark, a, a, just a woman with no bodyguard, with nobody supporting her, she took off by herself because of our love for the master to go to the tomb. She took off. She risked her life. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16 verse 25, and I read from the Amplified Version, it says, for whosoever is bent on saving his life, having his comfort and security here, shall lose it. And whosoever loses his life, is comfort and security here for my sake shall find it. Jesus was the one speaking here. Whosoever desires to save his life, we lose it. Whoever desires to lose his life, we save it. I'm not saying here that we should be, we should walk into danger or should not calculate the risks that's involved in doing something. But what about the risks that God wants us to take on his behalf? Are we willing to take those risks? 
What are the risks he wants you to take on his behalf? Are you willing to take that? And say, no, it's too dangerous. I can't do it. What about our brothers who are in the corners? Where people are being killed. They will not because of that relocate. Some have been given the assignment to be there. And they are risking their life day and night. What risk have you taken in your comfort zone where you are now? Her? What is the risk that we are ready to take for the master's sake? This woman took risk, great risk, because of the master. The Lord will give us grace in the mighty name of Jesus. What they are seeing in our life again that we can learn from. She desired to be with the Lord Jesus. She desired to be with the Lord Jesus. Even when she knew that Jesus was dead, she was going to the tomb to pour spices on his body. She desired to be with him. When she saw the tomb was open, she ran back. And the disciples also ran with her. And they came and they left her and they saw that the story she told was true. She stood there again, weeping and crying and said, I desire to be with my Lord. I need to see him. She told the man who was Jesus, who stopped was the gardener. He said, wherever you have put him, I'm ready to carry him. It means if they are taking Jesus' body somewhere, she was ready to carry the body of Jesus. You know how, how dead the body can be heavy. She was willing to take that price because of Jesus. That was the desire. That was an inner desire to be in the Lord's presence. I ask you, how do you desire to be in the Lord's presence? This issue of the COVID-19 has brought us to be going online. You know, when pastors will ask me sometimes, they say, we didn't see you in church. I say, I'm online. But I tell you, by the beginning of this year, God started telling me, online is not the same with the people who are there physically. It is not. I don't have to convince you. But God will convince you himself. I said, what you think you are getting online cannot be compared to what you are there physically. That's why I have to retrace my step. That's a desire to be in the presence of the Lord. What is that desire? So the psalmist said, I'm happy when they say, let's go to the house of the Lord. Why is it so difficult for us to come and stay in his presence? Why are we in a hurry to go? What are we going to do? What are we seeking? Who are we seeking that we want to go and rush out of his presence and not get the full benefit of what we can receive from his presence? What is that desire in our heart to always be in the Lord's presence? But in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy. And that joy shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. What do I say also in our life? She heard and recognized the voice of Jesus. She, she heard and recognized the voice of Jesus. When he told Jesus was a gardener, he asked him, if you have taken him away, sir, please, don't send me where he is. I will go and carry him. I'm ready to take him and bring him to where he's supposed to be. He now called her and said, Mary, he recognized the voice of Jesus. And said, Rabboni. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, if Jesus calls your name, we recognize him. And sometimes you have been calling us. He has been calling us, and we are not hearing. He said, my son, I want you to do this for me. My daughter, I want you to do this for me. We cannot hear him. Mary was able to recognize the voice of Jesus because she enjoyed his presence. He said, Rabboni, teacher. He recognized his voice. Jesus was saying in John 10, 27, he said, my sheep, they hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. The question is, are you hearing the voice of Jesus? Even when you hear, what do you do about it? My sheep, they hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. The Lord will give us the grace to hear his voice in the name of Jesus. For us as believers, we must know how God speaks to us. That cannot be overemphasized. We must know how God speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through inner witness. That's the way he speaks to us. In everyday life. In everyday life. He speaks to us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. It's not about spiritual things alone. He speaks to us on every occasion. 
Just like last week, and we woke up and there was no water in the, in the house. The pumping machine was working and the water was not going up. And I'd called the plumber and said, come on Friday, which was Good Friday. He said he was busy, he can't come. He said he was coming on Saturday. On Saturday, I called him. But Saturday morning, we were praying. I said, we had woke up early, we were praying. And I was speaking in tongues. I was talking to God. I said, what is the problem with this thing? Can I not find a solution to it? You know everything, Holy Spirit. And the guy called me later in the day, around 11, I mean, in the morning, that was not going to come. That will come later in the day. And there's no water. You can't do anything. There was not a drop of water in the house. And Holy Spirit, go to that place where the, the water is. Remove this and open it. And I removed it, opened it, cleaned it, do one thing or the other I told me to do. And I started pumping the water and the water was flowing. And I said, he knows the secret. He knows it. But we allow him not to help us. Maybe that guy will have said, uh, 5,000, 10,000, who knows what it's going to cost me. But he not cost me a dime. The Holy Spirit knew what was wrong with it. He knew it. But can we be patient enough to ask him and wait until he tells us what to do? If it was my normal side, I don't know what was wrong with it. That's how I was calling him. I'm begging him to come. But it has the Holy Spirit. And I said, this is the solution. So let's wait to hear his voice. Let's be eager to hear his voice. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. What did I see in her? She had a deep relationship and fellowship with the master. Mary had a deep relationship and fellowship with the master. And our experience is not different from other people in the scripture. Who call God by their, by their experience? Who call God's name by their experience? When Jesus said, Mary, she said, Rabboni, he means teacher. She had experienced Jesus as a teacher. Her life was transformed by his teaching ministry. That's how they call him teacher. Oh, teacher, I've enjoyed your ministry. You recognize Jesus and call him by that name of the experience she had had while following him. I want ask you this morning, brothers and sisters, what name can you call the Lord? By the experience you have had with him. What name can I call the Lord? By the experience you have had with him. And when we are praying this morning, you know, our, our Jew was leading us to say the experience that can be lasting for us as believers is a personal experience. We can have a corporate experience, yes. But a personal experience lasts longer, lasts better. The experience that Mary and Madeline had, nobody could take it away from her. So the question is, what experience do you have that you can call the name of the Lord and say, oh, Master, Lord. She called him several times. My Lord, I've been taken away. It's to show that she had a deep relationship and fellowship with the Master. My brothers and sisters, let's desire a deeper relationship and fellowship with the Master. And he give us the grace to go deeper with him in the mighty name of Jesus. What do I see now finally? She obeyed the master's instructions immediately. Jesus told her, go to my brethren. Go and tell them, I'm yet going to your God and my God. To your God and my God. To your father and my father. And quickly she ran to give that instruction. She did not waste time. How many times have we heard instruction from this pulpit, ladies and gentlemen? How quick are we to act to those instructions? Many who explained the Zeta class, she quickly obeyed. She went to deliver the message the way it is. How many times has God spoken to us in our closet and we are quick to obey those instructions? Immediately, not wasting time. My brothers and sisters, it's time for us to quickly obey God's instructions. She went to deliver the message the way it is. Based on her relationship with him, she did not waste time. She delivered it 
the way it was. God will help us to obey instructions and follow them immediately in the mighty name of Jesus. The second part, how do we seek the resurrected Christ? How do we seek the resurrected Christ? Can we go to the book of Acts chapter 1? Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Acts chapter 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, have given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during the 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, after this Mary's encounter with the Lord Jesus, the Bible recorded here that Jesus was around on earth for additional 40 days. After the resurrection, he was around for additional 40 days. And what did the scripture say he was doing those 40 days that he was around? The Bible says he was giving commandment to the apostles. He was giving them commandment to the apostles. He told them, wait until you are empowered by the Holy Ghost. Don't go anywhere. You cannot do this work unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost. So he gave us instruction. He presented himself to them. He appeared to many. He showed himself with infallible proofs that he had risen from the dead. Then the third thing he was doing, the Bible says he started to speak pertaining the things of the kingdom. He started to speak pertaining the things of the kingdom. And the, form, the only thing I will say this morning on how to seek the resurrected Christ is that we need to seek him in prayers. My brothers and sisters, we need to seek him in prayers. We encounter the resurrected Christ in the place of prayers. How is our prayer altar? How is your prayer altar? We encounter the resurrected Christ in the place of prayer. I remember a time that we, we pray a lot as a church. We took time to pray. But what are we doing now? And you know that that was the life of the disciples in the books of heart. If you get on read the book of heart, every time they were gathering together, they were praying. Time will not allow us to read those scripture verses. They were praying. When they received the Holy Ghost, they were praying. When they were threatened not to preach in the name of Jesus, after healing the man at Beautiful Gate, they went to pray. They were free again. When he had to their life, they kept praying and praying and praying. My brothers and sisters, we need to go back to the place of prayer. I don't know if you are happy with when we come on Tuesday and come on Thursday and we see very few people. I don't know if that's the way we should be. You and I need to be revived. We need revival in our hearts. It's not enough for that number of people to receive those blessings. Why should people be Sunday, Sunday Christians? We need to be revived. That was not the lifestyle of people who met the resurrected Christ. There were people who met him and their lives were transformed. And they transformed their environment also. But said, these are the people who are turned Jerusalem upside down by the things that God used them to do. So this morning I've been making a call for us to go to God again in prayers. And that's one thing God laid in my heart that I want us to do also this morning. And if there's only one person who's ready to do it, the Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. Jesus was around for 40 days. And those 40 days, three things happened during those 40 days he was on earth. He gave commandment, he presented himself, and he spoke about the things of the kingdom. Now, how many days do we have before those 40 days? Easter was when? When was, when was Easter? 
When was the date of Easter? We have eaten the rice and chicken and I have forgotten the date. When was Easter? 19? No. It was the ninth. From the ninth, you start to count 40 days. It will be at the end. It will be May 19, 2023. That's when 40 days will end. Now, from now to that May 19, we have only 30 days. And brothers and sisters, it was laid in my heart that I want us why Jesus was available in those for this many 30 days. I want us for him to reveal himself to us in those three things he did when he was around for 40 days on earth. The first thing he did, he gave commandments. My brothers and sisters, I want us to pray that God will give us commandments and instructions. Not different from what is in the Bible. There's no commandments that he will give you that will not be in line with the scripture. You can't say you see an angel who told you not to pay your tithe again. That is not for what we are saying about. But there will be commandment and instruction that we give you to help you your life, to help you to grow, to help your financial life, to help your family, that you be dishing out those instructions. But the things we need to do is that we will start to pray every night from midnight for 30 minutes. From today, 12 midnight, we will pray for 30 minutes. I'm going to pray for only three things instructions of how we can receive divine multiplication for this year and that Jesus should appear to us as he appeared in those 40 days and that he will give us revelation about the things of the kingdom that he will shed light in areas where there is still darkness in our life those are the three things that God laid my heart that we will do from 12 midnight today till the 19th of May 2023 if it's only one person who can do it the Lord is ready to move. So I want you to think in your heart because I will call us, myself and you, our father-in-law will pray for us because you don't do such things by strength. But I know that the reward is going to come to us in the name of Jesus. I have a strong feeling that this is our time of visitation. God said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. What he did in those days, if you believe it, he can do it also now. What he did in those 40 days, remarkable things he did to those 40 days. He appeared to many. He showed himself. I also love to see Jesus in my dream. I also love to talk to him. If you desire some of those experiences and giving you instructions on what to do, this life is not about how you can struggle. My brothers and sisters, it's not about how you can struggle or how smart you are. It's about the instructions God gives you to you. Now you'll be surprised. He works like if. You have done something. When God gives you an instruction, go ahead and do this. And I may not do it, but for you, you see the reward. You'll be giving us those instructions. If there's anyone who wants to participate in this, I want you to please come for. You want to be, devote yourself to prayers for a revival of the church and focusing on those three things every day, midnight, for the next 30 days. The Lord wants us to do it. If you are here, you want to be part of it, please come forward. My message is, has come to a close. If it's only one person, for 30 days, 12 midnight, just for 30 minutes, 30 minutes, is there anything that will be too strong to come in between us and God? 30 minutes, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, we'll be asking for a revival, a revival in our lives, a revival in our church, a revival of our hearts. If our heart is becoming cold and dead, that God should revive it again. And I believe strongly that God has laid in my heart that he will do those great things he did with no so He will do it in our lives again. In the mighty name of Jesus, please think very well. 12 midnight, from now till 19, just 30 minutes. I will, be, I will be praying and say, God, give me instructions on how to receive my divine multiplication this year. Give me instructions. Give me commandments. As we gave to those, the apostles, give me commandments. Give me directions. Then you also say, Jesus, appear to me. I want to see you. I want to have that experience. Let me see you. 
Let me have a vision of heaven. Let me see you within those 30 days. And also that you will speak to you concerning the things that pertain to the kingdom. He will shed light. There are some areas of our life that I see darkness. That he will shed his light on it. That we no longer be in darkness in those areas. That he will shed his light on it. And the Lord will give us the grace. Our Father in Lord is going to pray for us. That the Lord will help us to keep to it. And I will bring grace revival in our lives. And we shall be for partaker of it in the name of Jesus. Do something new in our life. Something new in our life. Something new in our life. We pray. Do something new in our life. Something new in our life. Something new. We pray do something new, do something new in our church, something new in our church, something new in our church. We pray do something new in our church. Something new in our church. Something new in our church. We one more time let us sing. Do something new in our midst. Something new in our midst. Something new in our midst. Something new in a stock, something new in a job, something new in a job. We pray. Father, our cry this day is that you do something new, is that you do something unique. Is that you do something outstanding. Lord, as we set time apart to call upon your name, let us have an encounter with you. Mary had an encounter. It was unique. It was outstanding. The disciples didn't have it. Mary had it. Mary had the voice of Jesus. She went to communicate the voice of Jesus to the people. Lord, may we hear your voice. Distinct and clearly in the name of Jesus. I ask that as you give us instruction, may we be obedient. As you give us instruction, may we be obedient. As you give us instruction, may we be obedient. Father, as a speaker, I said, for as many as are here, and there is still darkness in our life, as we go through this time to pray, let every darkness be exposed. Amen. Let every darkness be exposed. Amen. Let the light of God's word scatter every darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as we walk in the path, of righteousness we shall have testimonies i pray for everyone lord who will carry out this exercise sincerely and dutifully give them unique testimonies give them outstanding testimonies lead them testimonies that will be unique in the name of jesus and together as individuals together as a church, together as a family, you will move us forward in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray for your son that you have used today. We ask that Father, you re-energize him. You strengthen him. When next you will be given the opportunity to preach your word, 
Let him come out brand new again in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? Join Foursquare Wussi on all our social media platforms to get real-time updates on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare Wussi is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, Go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on Create an Account and fill in your basic information and get connected. First Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.